all right everybody assalamu alaikum uh, today we are going to end the lecture of uh, cholinergic pharmacology with this slide inshallah and then uh, we will move on to adrenergic pharmacology uh, today i'll give you a brief introduction about adrenergic pharmacology so that uh, in the next lesson on thursday you are totally aware of uh, some of the basic uh, terminologies all right so let's start okay so plasmolytic what is it if you can see i uh, i tried to actually attach a less terrible of the gif image because the uh, plas uh, these uh, uh, spasm you know these images they were so terrible and they were so scary uh, because some of the men after doing uh, these long term uh, exercises in the gym they uh, you know clicked uh, images and they made videos how their muscles actually spasm for a longer time after doing the gymming and uh, they were like huge contractions which at least were so unbearable for me anyways so uh, today we are going to talk about plasmolytics uh, previously we talked about muscle relaxants and when we were do, uh, dealing with muscle relaxants so at that moment we actually saw that we got into discussing uh, the muscle relaxants which can produce paralysis and they were more for anesthesia and uh, uh, you know for uh, putting a person for a longer time into a relaxed state now for example my muscle contracted and i am going to work i cannot take any medicine that will uh relax my muscles so much that i will be into deep trouble because i expect if i for example if i'm running and all of a sudden i fall down and uh, my muscles are then contracted so uh definitely i would look for a medicine that would uh you know uh give me instant relief without making me go into paralysis state even for a short time right so when we talk about spasmolytics it means that this is a medicine which is going to treat the contraction now what is spasm spasm is a sudden involuntary muscular contraction or convulsive movement now you see sometimes we do see this that all of a sudden we feel that our muscles are contracted and especially of thighs we feel a lot right especially when we do gymming at that time <clears throat> so here uh, i i was sure that you guys are pretty familiar with this uh, so i inserted these two images as well what is coronary spasm just imagine the coronary artery it is so this this coronary artery is of a person who is in a good stable condition right now what happened is this the coronary artery has spasm right so this spasm can be due to uh any medication right or any interaction between the medicines okay so uh this is there you see the uh, coronary artery a healthy coronary artery is contracted and that's why the clot is started to form and this can obviously lead to heart attack now if you look over here into the intestine you see uh, what is contract by the way contract is that somebody something gets shorter and thicker this is a brief uh, definition of contraction right okay uh, so when we talk about relaxed muscle cells okay so at that moment we would see that uh, you see it's elongated right and it's thinner in size however when we say contracted so you see this is over here the muscles are getting shorter in size and they are getting thicker right this is contraction all right now what is the mechanism how mechanism of what mechanism of plasmolytics okay so uh wait yeah 
So plasmolytics, what they do is this. These muscle relaxants reduce increased muscle tone associated with a variety of nervous system disorders. For example, cerebral palsy. What is cerebral palsy? I've attached an image so that you can see the per cerebral, the portion of the brain is actually associated with the uh, brain, uh, you know, uh, with the brain that's controlling the muscular contraction and coordination and everything, right? Now, when somebody has cerebral palsy, it means that their muscles are not getting coordinated in a nice way, right? Okay. And then um, multiple sclerosis. What is multiple sclerosis? I have attached another image over here for you guys. You see, what happens in this disease? This is a normal neuron. Now this WBC is releasing chemicals which is degenerating the myelin sheet. And that's how the person is getting affected. Right, everybody? So you see, the person would feel uh, uh, jerks, and even sometimes scissors and the person would feel that uh, you know some somebody is pinching with the person with the pins in the feet right so this is multiple sclerosis okay that the body itself uh, wbc does what wbc is actually a defensive mechanism right uh, these uh, these cells actually defend our uh, our bodies from any antigen, right? From any foreign objects, from any foreign uh, chemicals getting entry into our body. Now, what happens is this, when WBC itself start to release the chemicals which would kill the myelin sheet, which would destroy the myelin sheet, so definitely the person would be affected a lot. Okay, so you see, these are, uh, reduce uh, weight. Let me start again. These muscle relaxants reduce increased muscle tone associated with a variety of nervous system disorders that result in loss of supraspinal control and hyperexcitability. Supraspinal is actually, uh, supra means above, okay? So above the spinal cord means it's associated with brain. So all of the circuits that are working in the brain to... Uh, uh, you know, uh, for a normal body function, they are getting affected, okay? Uh, so what happens is this, it causes eventually abnormal skeletal muscle, bowel, and bladder functions, okay? Let's dig into it. When we talk about therapeutic uses, so plasmolytic drugs act to reduce abnormal muscle tone without paralysis. These drugs increase or mimic the activity of uh, gamma amino butyric acid, that is GABA, in the spinal cord and brain or interfere with the release of calcium in the skeletal muscles. Now, when I read this line, I'm sure a lot of my previous lectures would be there in your mind, right? When I talk about GABA, what, what does come into your mind? It should come into your mind that it is inhibitory in nature, right? Okay, and when I say calcium, so automatically at this stage, my previous lectures should be spinning in your mind that how exactly GABA was there, how exactly calcium was affected and all that. Over here, I want to elaborate to you that GABA receptors actually are of three types. GABA A, GABA B, GABA C. Now GABA A and C work by the ligand gated ion channels however gaba b receptors are associated with g protein coupled receptors okay now uh, gaba c we won't discuss that much but we will be discussing gaba a and gaba b more now gaba a is pentameric right pentameric means five parts okay so it is Pentameric structure, it has a structural and functional similarity with ligand-gated ion. Now, what do we mean by that? If you remember, we talked about that GABA, uh, these ligand-gated ion channels have docking sites, right? So if you look over here, GABA has a do docking site 
where the ligand get, it would get attached. And then as a result, the channel would get opened up and then calcium would be influxed, right? Okay, so each GABA A receptor contain two alpha, two beta, and one gamma subunit. You see over here, two alpha, two beta, one gamma receptor. <clears throat> now, GABA B receptor. GABA B receptors, they are heterodimers. Now, if you look at this shape, it should be spinning in your mind my first few lectures, how exactly when we were talking about the basics of pharmacology that there are uh, certain types of receptors which are dimer in nature and then how exactly protein kinase C works and everything, okay? So, GABA B has been cloned to B1 and B2 subunit. You see, B, GABA B1 subunit, GABA B2 subunit, okay? It means GABA, look here, B1, B2, okay? Uh, so two biological actions would be there. Decrease calcium conductance, increase potassium conductance. conductance. <coughs> okay. When I say decrease calcium conductance, what would happen to the muscle? Would they contract or would they relax? Okay. Increase potassium conductance. What would happen to the action potential? Would it hyperpolarize or would it depolarize? Let's see. So, most of the sedative and hypnotic drugs either binds with alpha, beta, and gamma subunits that get activated, uh, thus opening up the chloride channels that causes hyperpolarization of cells. And finally, depression of CNS. TK. We just talked here that potassium would be influxed. So as a result, we just read here that hyperpolarization of cells would be there. And since we know calcium is what? Sorry, chlorine is what? Chloride ion is inhibitory in nature, right? So it would depress the CNS. Okay. If you look over here, it has potassium plus sign, right? Potassium plus sign means a lot of potassium would be into the cell and then hyperpolarization would be there. Calcium would be stopped, negative effect. As a result, what would happen when calcium is released in a lot of amount? So at that time, the contraction was there. So here, when decreased calcium is there, so obviously the muscles would relax. Now, the first drug that we are going to talk about is dantrolene. Now, it acts directly on muscle to reduce skeletal uh, muscle contraction. Dantrolene is also used to treat malignant hyperthermia. What is malignant hyperthermia? You see, I've attached this image over here so you all can remember. Basically, due to anesthetic drugs, okay, what happens that the person's heartbeats get high, okay, and the person starts to have high grade fever and all, okay. So in order to treat that, we sometimes give dantrolene. You have to remember this name uh, because obviously it can be tested. Now, this drug interferes with calcium release from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Benefit may not be apparent for a week or more, okay? But it would be beneficial. The major adverse effect of dantrolene are muscle weakness. Now, what happens is this, when the muscles won't work, okay, they won't contract, they would be relaxed, then obviously the muscle would start to develop weakness, right? And uh, so, which may limit, limit therapy and sedation. 
So long term use can result in hepatotoxicity that may be fatal. So it is like a huge alarm associated with this drug that whenever we are giving dantrolene to somebody, we have to check either the liver is working properly or not. Okay. All right. Wait. Okay. Now is baclofen. I'm sure this image is pretty much uh, um, uh, like you're accustomed to this image. Okay. So this baclofen is an analog of GABA. It is a GABA B receptor agonist. Okay. That hyperpolarizes neurons to inhibit synaptic transmission in the spinal cord. Now you see over here, hyperpolarization it causes, okay? So adverse effects include some drowsiness and an increased frequency of scissors in epileptic patients. And when we are saying that it is producing hyperpolarization, so definitely it would be CNS depressant. And when it would be CNS depressant, so definitely it would induce drowsiness, right everybody? Okay, then we have tizanidine. Okay, so you see, first of all, let me talk about this drug, which is clonidine. Okay, so clonidine is actually alpha 2 agonist, and alpha 2 agonist is there in the brain. So, what happens is this it sends a message to reduce signals of adrenals, and as a result, Decreased secretion of catecholamines. When I say catecholamines, it means dopamine, epinephrine, norepinephrine, and all. And as a result, when it is decreased, okay, so definitely our heart rate would decrease and our blood pressure would decrease, right? So this tizanidine is an alpha 2 adrenal receptor agonist and it is analog of clonidine that reduces muscle spasm with less muscle weakness than baclofen, dantrolene, and diazepam. Adverse effects include some drowsiness and hypotension. Hypotension, why? Because overall effect is there in front of you. It is decreasing heart rate, it is decreasing blood pressure. So hypotension is there and reports of hepatotoxicity is there. Okay. Okay. Then we have another uh, drug that is benzodiazepine. So benzodiazepines such as diazepam act on the spinal cord and CNS to facilitate GABA activity. And its major effect is sedation. Another drug that we have is botulinum toxin, which is also known as Botox. Now you see, Blotidium toxin acts by inhibiting the release of acetylcholine from motor nerve terminals. Botulinium toxin is used to treat local muscle spasm, spastic disorders like cerebral palsy, blepharospasm, and strabismus associated dystonia. It is also used for cosmetic reduction of facial wrinkles. We have already talked in deep detail about botulinum, so I'm not go going to talk more about it. Now to have summary of what we have studied today is this. We have this drug, tizanidine, which affects C, acts on the alpha-2 receptors, which are presynaptic, okay? Baclofen, acts on GABA-B receptors, postsynaptic and presynaptic. Then we have benzodiazepines that work on postsynaptic GABA A receptors. Then we have botulinum toxin, which inhibits the release of the neurotransmitter from the vesicle. And in the last, we have dantrolene, which is directly injected into the muscles. Okay. 
the other uh, drug see this was one one uh, sub subtopic that was a spasmolytic drug the other subtopic is ganglion blocking drugs i did not make like separate lecture for it and i inserted in it because it's just two three slides not much okay so when we talk about ganglion blocking drug okay so it means that you see here it's a ganglia here it's a ganglia so it's going to block the ganglia okay so ganglion blocking when we talk about the uh, effects so in the heart it would slow the heart rate it would do vasoconstriction ciliary and circular muscle contraction secretions and contraction of git contraction of uh, the walls uh, <coughs> okay wait mechanism and therapeutic uses of the drugs which is like very we don't use it that often okay so that is uh, the two drugs that i have mentioned here is trimethophan and miclimine uh, that they inhibit the effect of acetylcholine at nicotinic receptors by acting competitively at both uh, sympathetic and parasympathetic autonomic ganglia ganglia means ganglia like either it's autonomic or okay so on either of the ganglia they attack okay and because of lack of selectivity and numerous adverse effects they are used rarely in the clinical setting okay so very rarely we use it all right everybody thank you so much i hope the uh, spasmolytic drugs is clear to you